I've had this book for a long time. It was one of a number of books that I picked up when I started to get really serious about growing my own food. Out of all the books, this one made the boldest promise to be able to produce huge amounts of food from very little land. There is a lot in this book, but at its core is a simple idea. By deeply digging the soil in fixed beds and incorporating large amounts of compost, a huge yield can be produced from very closely spaced plants. For this reason, I am using the intensive methodology to manage one of the six family-sized gardens in the Red Garden Project. The intensive approach has been adopted by many growers over the years, but a lot of the techniques have been refined and changed. Many have shifted to the use of a broad fork for an easier and less invasive deep cultivation of the soil. Others are growing intensively using minimum tillage or have shifted to a no-dig approach. For a number of reasons, I have stuck with the use of uh, double digging to prepare the fixed beds of my intensive garden each year. I wanted to see what would happen if I use this method for a number of seasons and it's an appropriate technique for the scale of a 100 square meter garden. There are also specific conditions on the site of the garden where I feel that a double digging approach has been of significant benefit so far. But first, what is double digging? At its simplest, it involves digging a trench across the width of a fixed bed and then loosening up the soil at the bottom of this trench. The trench is then filled with the soil from the next section of the bed creating a new trench and the process is repeated. Done reasonably carefully, the basic stratification of the soil is maintained and there is no aggressive tilling to cause significant damage to the earthworms and other soil biology. Compost is usually added to the surface of the bed, either before or after digging, and more can be added to the bottom of each trench as well. By repeating this double digging and the addition of lots of compost for a number of seasons, the aim is to end up with loose, friable and enriched soil twice as deep as what would be possible with normal cultivation. All of this enables the plant roots to more easily colonize a greater volume of highly fertile soil, leading to much faster and more abundant growth. That's the theory anyways. In reality, the work to establish the 16 beds of my intensive garden was spread out over a number of years. This was due primarily to the presence of a lot of rocks in the soil and not having enough time in the first few years to adequately deal with them. Although the top 20 to 25 centimeters of soil was reasonably clear of stones, below that was a layer of fairly densely packed rocks, which often required a pry bar to work them loose. But interestingly, it is only a relatively thin layer and the subsoil below often contained fewer rocks. This rock layer seemed to extend across the entire site and is a key context issue for the six different gardens. This rock layer obviously posed a challenge to the double digging method, but there was also an incentive to remove them if I was willing to put in the work. And it was a lot of work with several wheelbarrow loads of rocks of various sizes being pulled out of each of the beds. But now that the task is done, there's only a few smaller stones to be found and the job of double digging is relatively easy. The top layer of soil is easy to move with a spade and the bottom layer of soil is easy to loosen up with a fork and the roots of the plants now have ready access to the subsoil below. It's hard to determine how beneficial this uh, structural transformation within the root zone will be to the growth of plants. No doubt if this rock layer hadn't been removed, the plants that wanted to send their roots deeper would have eventually found their way through the spaces between the rocks. But carrots and parsnips definitely love the deeper loose soil. I can also shift to an easier and less invasive use of a broad fork to loosen the soil most seasons, something that would have been impossible before this rock layer was removed. For the first few years of cultivating this garden I didn't have access to much compost, but for the last few seasons I've been able to add two wheelbarrow loads of compost to most of the beds. One wheelbarrow load was spread over the surface before digging, which ended up being mixed into the top layer of the bed. An additional wheelbarrow load was used to amend the lower layer, adding a bit of compost to the bottom of each trench before forking it in. Spread evenly over the 4.25 square meters of a bed, this amount of compost would have produced a layer almost 5 centimeters thick. This is all worked into the top 50 centimeters of the soil, which translates roughly into 10% compost by volume. For each of the past few seasons, I have uh, used almost 30 wheelbarrow loads of compost to amend the 16 beds. That is almost 3 cubic meters of compost for a 100 square meter garden each year. That is a lot of fertility, but thankfully I had the, an abundant supply from the No Rules Community Compost. And I also wanted to see what would happen if I really boosted the organic matter in this sandy loam soil. This season I am moving away from the soil building approach and using more of a sustaining strategy. 
Instead of mixing the compost into the full depth of the bed, I'm adding compost to the surface after digging and only mixing it into the top 5 to 10 centimeters of soil. This approach is more in line with natural systems where organic matter is added to the surface and will eventually recreate the, a more natural stratification within the soil. In addition, I'm only adding one wheelbarrow load of compost to most of the beds, which will produce a layer of about 2.5 centimeters thick. But what is the result of all this work and fertility? Is the extra effort worth it? Looking at one example, last year's parsnip crop in this garden produced a yield of about 20 kilograms from one square meter of bed, with each root averaging about half a kilogram. In comparison, the adjacent extensive garden produced only about a quarter of the yield with roots only half the size on average, even though they were given twice the space to grow in. In addition, the roots from the intensive garden were substantially longer and less forked, thanks to all the rocks being removed. Of course, the results of one exceptional crop in one season is not enough to prove anything, but I have had similar results from the previous year. Perhaps I have yet to figure out how to get the most out of the extensive garden. I don't have enough data to do a proper comparison across the other gardens, but the trend across a number of crops seems to be similar. This intensive approach seems to be living up to its bold promises. I still have a number of questions about all this. Does the double digging, the close spacing and the extra fertility equally contribute to the higher yields or is one aspect far more important than others? How much more can the yields increase? How does the nutritional density of the crops from the intensive garden compare with the other gardens? Now that the beds are established, would it be better to shift to a no-dig method to enable the development of a more natural, less disturbed soil biology? I don't have answers to any of these questions yet. For the last few seasons, I've had enough compost, enough time, and I don't mind the hard work, which ends up being about 10 hours of double digging for all 16 beds. I believe that the additional work that I put into removing all of the rocks will be of significant benefit for many years to come and the increased fertility is definitely an asset. Although I will need to do a soil test to determine how the balance of nutrients can be improved. But according to the law of diminishing returns, additional fertility and looser soils will at some point no longer translate into improved yields. The cool growing conditions, the windy site and the Lack of sun that is typical of this climate will place limits on possible growth, or some other factor will. But I don't know if I've reached that point yet, or if significantly better yields are possible, and I won't know if I don't continue with this experiment. I have been working on these six gardens for a number of years now, but it's only recently that I've been able to devote enough time and to maintain a consistent attention throughout the whole season. As a result, I'm only starting to gather meaningful data that can be used to compare the different gardens, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in the coming seasons. If you're also interested, please subscribe. And if you want to help to support me in creating more videos like this, please check out my new Patreon page. And as always, Thanks for watching.